Tomatoes are always a summertime favorite here around Green Country. Meteorologist Taft Price joins us this morning with our garden expert Paul James for our Two Works for You in the Garden segment uh, there in, in our Hard Rock kitchen this morning for that segment. Good morning, you guys. And good morning, Will. Yeah, look who I found. Paul is back. I'm back. It's back. You know, it's been so hot. We were talking about that. It's hard to almost do her in the garden segments. But one thing that we always think about in the summertime is growing tomatoes. And we were talking about during the break that a lot of folks grow tomatoes, but they're really not the easiest things in the world to grow. They aren't. I mean, they remain America's number one backyard crop. And yet you're faced with a lot of challenges when you're trying to grow that perfect tomato. I mean, there are pest problems like spider mites and tomato hornworm nematodes. And there are a number of bacterial and viral diseases that will affect them. And as if all that weren't enough, in my case, it's the squirrels and the birds <laughs> that know the day before I'm going to harvest when to eat them. They get a little bit hungry. So you're telling us that you, now this time of year, the tomatoes are starting to wind down a little bit, but you're saying maybe not quite the end yet. Tell us about it. Not necessarily. I mean, when temperatures get well into the 90s and beyond, as <laughs> it's going to be today. <laughs> Thanks for that, buddy. Sorry. Um, the tomato production just pretty much stops. Okay. The flowers just curl up. They, in some cases, they don't even set flowers. So you've got two choices. You can either wait, keep the plant healthy, continue to water and all that, and as temperatures moderate a bit, then into late August, September, you can expect an additional harvest. Okay. Depending on when the first freeze is, um, you might not end up with a lot of red tomatoes, but you'll certainly have plenty of green tomatoes. And I don't know about you, but fried green tomatoes are one of my favorite foods. Yeah, sounds good to me. So what you're saying is a lot of times when we see the plant looking like starting to, to wilt and not look so good, a lot of times we just say, eh, it's over with, and right. it dies. But if we want to keep it, just keep watering it as normal. Or you can take cuttings, which I've done here, okay. and I'm going to root these. Hmm. You like the glass I brought? That's I like that. It's <laughs> nice. Yeah, very nice. I didn't think I should bring a nice vase. Um, Your wife would love these. Exactly. So you root these out because the little hairs that you'll see on the stems, those are all potential roots. Okay. So those will start to root out, and when they do, then you can plant in a container. Wow. Now, if you go directly in the ground, the, the plant may struggle. Okay. But if you'll go into a container, and a size like this or even bigger if you like, got to have drainage holes, and really put in some wonderful amended you know, mushroom compost, barnyard manure kind of composted products, then you get another crop of tomatoes. Well, so you have more chances. You know, we're also talking, this is the problem that I always deal with, we're talking about tomatoes that do that cracking on the top. And I've been bathing mine all year long and it was looking good and about the last three days while I was waiting for it to ripen, the cracks show up. Tell us a little bit about why that happens. That's usually uneven moisture. Okay. So you get these big moisture swings and the juices in the tomato contract a little bit when it's dry and then you water or we get some rain, I wish. Um, and then they expand rapidly. So, and there's a condition called cat facing that is pretty much what you're describing. Also blossom end rot is another problem where at the blossom end it starts to rot and you'll see this necrotic tissue. Uh, that's the result technically of calcium deficiency, okay. but soils have plenty of calcium. It's just, again, erratic moisture. So use mulch, lots of mulch, water routinely, and you know these all just were harvested two days ago at Southwood wow, Farm. Great. And as we were talking too, the cherry tomatoes tend to be the easiest to grow. Yeah, they are. And they're delicious. I mean, look at that one. This is a, it's called an indigo cherry. Very pretty. You know, I have three of these plants. Two of them are still there. One of them on the storms a week ago. Flew over into the neighbor's yard, drifted right out of the ground. I don't know how that happened. Either that or the dog grabbed it. I don't know which. Well, one. my corn flattened, <laughs> so. Yeah, my garden looks pretty bad right now after all of that. So some great tips here on tomatoes, so we don't want to give up on our tomatoes, as we can still keep them going. Exactly, and remember, we're less than a month away from planting the fall garden. Okay. Despite the 102 degree temperatures. And I'm sure we're going to start talking about that in some of our future in the garden segments coming up. I think we will. All right, sounds good. Well.